The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Now, the author of The Path of Least Resistance and the Tech Insider, David White. Wow, what a difference a weekend makes. Uh, not, of course, in the S&P cash, because uh, we're down at just a point. But, uh, boy, talk about uh, news going on and uh, things affecting us uh, personally. Uh, but, uh, well, what can you say? It is a gorgeous day down here at the headquarters of Technical Trading and Investing, uh, TFNN.com. And, of course, I'm your lovable and uh, huggably soft host, David White. But uh, I, I did just the, uh, I guess, uh, from Friday night on, uh, just a barrage of news that I thought was incredibly interesting, some of it market-related, some of it political. Uh, probably the f most interesting thing uh, in the financial world was a leaked article. Uh, ben Bernanke decided to pick up the phone and give his uh, favorite uh, uh reporter at the Wall Street Journal, an exclusive, uh, but uh, on the down low. Uh, it was rather interesting in its content, and also rather interesting in the fact that all the other reporters that didn't get it uh, were uh, kind of all weekend long. So it was uh, kind of interesting in the scope of what happened and the market's reaction this morning. Uh, and uh, what it is is the... Uh, uh, one and only Ben Bernanke, squeezably soft. Oh, I forgot to get our Ben Bernanke music playing out there. I'm too sexy for my whatever the name of that song was. Uh, well, I guess we'll have to play it another day. But anyway, uh, Ben Bernanke uh, basically saying he's going to start throttling uh, the uh, amount of money coming into the market. Uh, this morning, uh, futures were off as much as 10 on the S&P cash overnight. I think it was 10. And close to it. Uh, when I got up, it was six and a half or seven. I think I saw a negative 10 tick down there uh, from last night sometime. Uh, a lot of people thought, oh, well, this will get uh, bulls uh, uh, interested in uh, selling a little bit. And uh, certainly they're not buying today, but uh, uh, we've had uh, a move back up to 1600, uh, yeah, 1,636 on the S&P cash where volume just absolutely dies. Uh, we've had that again today, only 1.8 billion shares on the consolidated New York Stock Exchange tape. It is a vapor out there today. Uh, and uh, can they hold this market up through expiration? Uh, still looks like uh, there's going to be a surprise out here uh, to get this thing going down. And I'm wondering if it didn't Ben Bernanke himself. Uh, he basically uh, lit a lot of fires all around the uh, barn. Uh, nice giant bales of hay and was praying for the wind not to blow. Every other time the Fed has done this in the past, something has happened and caused uh, a great dis, uh, amount of uh, market dislocation. Uh, and it was always something that someone hadn't planned on. It always kind of came out of the blue. A lot of people hadn't been talking about it. Uh, but uh, anything from the dot-com to the housing bus to everything, you know, there's people out there like uh, us at TFNN that see way, way fa far down the road. Uh, the Fed in the past has always tried to turn the spigot off, and uh, by the time they uh, turn the spigot off, almost every time those fires have spread from the little piles of hay around the barn to actually catch the barn on fire. Now, Ben said, hey, I'm going to turn, uh, I've got uh, the phone number for the fire department on speed dial, and if the uh, barn catches on fire, I'm going to get people here, and they're going to run right up and start hosing that barn down. And so what happened over the weekend? Hey, nobody believed him so far. Uh, they think he is just jawboning. He is not telling the truth that he's going to continue with a flood of money into the marketplace. Uh, that there's no way he's pulling back. If they truly thought he was pulling back, they would have started selling this morning and quit. And, and and not quit. And my belief is now he's going to have to do something to make them believe that he truly is doing it. I think he has seen as many stocks out here uh, that are uh, just gone ballistic. Uh, I re uh, you know, we've got probably four or five now uh, that are in the stratosphere that if they grew 
uh, at their current rates or even uh, hyper rates of what they have now uh, would not be worth their stock price in 10 years. Uh, a lot of things can happen 10 years. I don't think I'm paying uh, for uh, growth uh, that would only uh, have the uh, uh, lines cross in 10 years. I think that uh, anybody would think that that is probably a bad bet. Uh, maybe you're in a trade for the next five minutes. Uh, I don't think that that's a problem. Uh, next day or two, uh, we might actually see some action out of the Fed. Uh, if you have never been in a market where the Fed comes out in the middle of the day, I will refer you back to October of 1998. Uh, within, th within 30 days of me deciding to go into uh, the market as a full-time trader uh, and do that transition over the next three years, uh, basically by uh, 2001, uh, I wasn't even uh, leaving the house during the day. Uh, I had basically became a full-time trader. I was still uh, working actively at my company, but uh, down here in Florida, and, uh, and I'd go places on the weekend, I'd go to a few conventions, but mostly I was doing work at home and watching my investments. Uh, it was, uh, but you know, you just have to wait until uh, the Fed walks in in the middle of the day uh, in a market and decides to either throw gasoline on the fire or decides to put the fire out. And when they decide to do that, uh, it is fast and quick. He's given us two warnings now. Uh, the first one uh, kind of buried in the Fed minutes. Uh, Friday was the unambiguous one that I'm kind of shocked people didn't listen to. Uh, the third one will be active uh, an announcement that we didn't buy 80 billion, we're only going to buy 40 billion. And then that will be when the market starts moving. And the next month he'll say, okay, I'm going to buy 75 billion. And then maybe 70 billion. And he's going to get the market to start moving. Uh, and I think he finally understands, well, he may be the first person at the Fed to actually short circuit a giant bubble caused by them. Uh, and, uh, well, we'll see how that goes. I think uh, uh, I was lucky enough to be able to add one short this morning, uh, and uh, it may uh, or could be a good as short as uh, Qualcomm was in 2001. We'll have to see. It won't, uh, I don't think it's going to happen like uh, Qualcomm did on the uh, first, well, it was actually on the 3rd of January. But uh, if uh, Indy Tigers have been here around long enough uh, and uh, knew that, we were all waiting uh, for that uh, market to move. And I was short, and I think Tom was short, and everybody else was short. I actually bought puts, I think. Uh, but uh, it's one of these things where uh, this market is primed. Uh, they are either going to put the fire out uh, and or we're going to have, uh, when people are talking about 100 points or 50 points more in the S&P, that won't be it. If Bernanke loses control of this, uh, it can't get people to believe that he can throttle the market, how much money that goes into it. Uh, this market will take off, and we won't see anything short of uh, probably two, three, maybe even 400 points to the upside. And I think he knows that uh, we are on the prep precipice. Uh, he's not uh, too big of a dummy. Uh, in fact, uh, probably, uh, you know, well, maybe we should ask the uh, Bloomberg people, since they've been spying on everything he did. If you missed that this uh, last Friday, uh, basically somebody uh, shot their mouth off at Bloomberg on the news side of it about what was happening and asked uh, if a gentleman was still working there because he hadn't logged in. So what's a newspaper reporter uh, getting the information on who logs in and who doesn't log in at a particular uh, location? Uh, pretty interesting. So if you haven't caught most of that, uh, that is the gist of it. Basically, reporters are sitting and watching who turns on and off uh, their uh, Bloomberg terminal, what they are looking at, and how long they are looking at it. And now, this, all this information was originally set up uh, to find out what things would be better on a Bloomberg terminal. Uh, if you don't know what a Bloomberg terminal is, it's kind of the equivalent of what you have from your broker, your broker dealer on steroids, and it is also about uh, right now, I don't know, 2100 bucks a month. I think that's what it is to start. You could buy a new car every single year for what a Bloomberg terminal costs you. Now, if you're at one of these big Wall Street places and you're making four, uh, 400 grand a year, uh, for them to give you a Bloomberg terminal, not a big deal. Uh, if you haven't seen Tom, uh, 
each one of these Bloomberg terminals now is locked to a single individual. He has to get his thumbprint, put it on this little box, and hold it up uh, to a thing that uses a QR, a QR code on the screen. Uh, they've done everything but taken a DNA sample for him to use it. Uh, we're going to talk more about this. Lots of political uh, news, uh, Big Brother on the horizon, and uh, somebody on CNBC that should be in jail, and I forgot about it. We're going to bring it up here in just a minute. Oh, we should be going to break. I don't hear anything. Oh, are we? No, that's because I changed it. I've got three more minutes in this segment. Boy, I can go on forever. I was, I changed uh, the uh, little clock here for the uh, for the four to six o'clock hour on Friday and did not change it back. Anyway, on what I did, uh, we were talking about uh, the IRS. Uh, and, of course, uh, if you've never been on the uh, receiving end of the IRS, uh, count your lucky stars. Uh, they do a lot of horrible things. They tried to ruin my life at one time. Uh, and, you know, luckily enough, I got the right attorney. Uh, and uh, what we've found out now, though, is if, uh, eh, if you want to start an organization and you uh, uh, want to uh, promote... Uh, eh, Jewish issues uh, for Israel, uh, they're going to come after you. If you have anything that sounds like liberty in the title of your uh, organization, they're going to come after you. And yeah, at the beginning, you could think, well, maybe this was just maybe a, a bunch of clods with a bad idea. Uh, but they didn't. After they found out uh, these organizations, they went after the donors. Some of them were called and told them they were going to get audited. Uh, we've got uh, Big Brother in a big way uh, going on out here. And, uh, you know, uh, it's not new to use the IRS to go after your political opposition. Uh, the first uh, president to really get his hands caught in the cookie jar was FDR. Uh, he makes uh, the Chicago thugs look a little tame. Uh, he was uh, vicious about it. And, uh, uh, you know, very, uh, you can say that uh, uh, probably today, uh, he would have gotten the same treatment as Nixon, I suspect. Uh, other people have tried it. F uh, uh, LBJ was famous for getting his hands caught in the cookie jar. And, of course, everybody holds Nixon up as the poster child uh, for the evil president out here. Uh, and the question is, uh, how far did this go? Uh, if it would have just been a list of people to look at, it would have been interesting, uh, that they were going after the political donors, uh, doesn't pass the smell test, and the fact that uh, they had done it uh, several times before. If you watch CNBC long enough, you're going to see Austin Goolsby. Austin Goolsby, uh, who uh, outed and uh, talked about the financial uh, returns of uh, one of the contributors uh, to a political uh, election. Uh, he should be in jail right now because it is against the law. But uh, now, if you're on the uh, right side of the party, you don't go to the jail for that kind of stuff. So next time you see Austin Goolsby, remember that guy should be uh, making uh, small ones out of big ones in the federal pen for uh, uh, basically talking about uh, people's tax returns. Uh, there are more people on my bad list today. TFNN is excited to launch our brand new software charting program, The Art of the Charts, in collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind software, Art of the Charts allows you to scan for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, Butterflies, ABCs, and much more. Art of the Charts is designed to help you when scouring the market for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, and even months searching to find. As part of our introductory pricing, we're offering licenses available at only $59 per month. We're so confident that you'll love this new, outstanding piece of charting software that we'll even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Lock in your low price today by ordering your copy at TFNN.com.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Dave, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And as we come back, uh, we're talking in the den uh, about uh, 1984, uh, George Orwell, where everybody's watching everything you do. Um, yeah, kind of interesting, especially when you think about Bloomberg and what's happening on the street. I was actually looking at the uh, articles coming through about uh, what the IRS had been doing, and I was thinking more about uh, Animal Farm, which is another uh, wonderful uh, book by Orwell. Uh, in fact, uh, if you've never read it, uh, what a fantastic book. It's uh, kind of the parable of... Uh, uh, the uh, 1917 re revolution in Russia and the whole idea that we're going to have this utopian society and guess what happens? Uh, uh, the people uh, that uh, uh, decide to overthrow the government become the government not that much too, long, uh, too later and become as bad as the people uh, they sought to uh, uh, get out of power. Uh, it's told from uh, a perspective of uh, the animals on the farm that eventually run the farmer off the farm and uh, become as bad as the uh, farmer was uh, in the end. And uh, it's, it's quite a powerful book. Orwell was very good at pointing out how bad socialism and uh, communism uh, were. Uh, and, of course, uh, a great book if you want to really get into the uh, weeds is called Why Orwell Matters. And it's uh, uh, the guy, I'm trying to remember the guy that wrote it. 
uh, just passed away too not long ago. English guy uh, could shred anybody uh, in a uh, debate about anything in just a few minutes. I'm trying to remember his name. I'll think of it uh, during the break. But books called Why Orwell Matters. In fact, I bet I could just look it up right now. Uh, why Orwell Matters. Uh, Christopher Hitchens. But uh, won a great book on, you know, I, I'd read all the books uh, from uh, those guys in uh, uh, 19... You know, 1984, Orwell, uh, early on, in the, probably when I was 12, 15, I think, for school, I was always an avid reader, uh, but uh, and two great books that I think uh, should be on everybody's, uh, should read before everybody uh, passes away in their life. In fact, uh, kids should all probably read them before they go out and have their skulls full of mush, uh, put together with all kinds of stupid stuff from teachers. Who might be teaching them bad things? Anyway, uh, getting back into the whole IRS thing, uh, you know, we know now uh, that the uh, reason that they came out was a uh, report that's going to come out, I think Wednesday or Thursday this week, uh, forced on them uh, by the other side of the equivalent of the A uh, C L U or A C U L U A, eh, whatever. Uh, and uh, they basically came out and found out, of course, that everybody's lied about everything. And the second big uh, giant fib of the week last week. Uh, but uh, we're going to find out more. But uh, when anybody says we should trust the government, uh, these are the days I remember. It's happened before. It will happen again. Human nature is not changing. We may be smarter, faster. Uh, we might have better drugs. But uh, the uh, thought that uh, human nature has changed uh, anywhere in recorded history uh, is uh, still beyond me to see any social proof. Uh, so we'll look at that. Oh, anyway, uh, like I said, uh, volume uh, very light out here today uh, so far. And, you know, we've got still no, not even close to uh, two, 2 billion shares. Once again, testing uh, the top, at least in the S&P cash. So it'll be uh, very interesting to see uh, what we have moving out here uh, later today, but uh, a lot of stocks that uh, had pop are uh, moving back just a little bit. Uh, we're going to look at some uh, uh, Gartley patterns uh, out of art of the charts in the second half of this show. Uh, if you've not got it, you can get a free uh, 30 a day trial. Uh, well, I guess not trial. I guess it's money back guarantee, and I guess I should know that. Uh, it is a free uh, money back guarantee. And uh, every night it goes through more than 5,000 stocks to find uh, the best Gartley patterns and some other things. Uh, we'll be adding additional features down the line. I was actually uh, working on it all weekend to make the scan just a little faster, hopefully to getting it to you just a little earlier each night. And uh, we'll see how well that goes this week. But uh, uh, it's all about speed. Uh, everybody wants something. But uh, uh, these are all daily charts. Uh, the uh, close course, uh, you'd have to almost be on top of all of these to uh, get them to work on minute charts. But uh, these are, uh, a lot of them setting up very nicely. We're going to go through these on the break. Uh, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648, 877-927-6648. I'd like to have your phone call. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives you Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. With Market Insights, nothing is left to guessing. With the market at record levels, volatility is here, and now is a perfect time to take advantage of a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights. As recently as March 26th, Tom advised his subscribers to liquidate their four short term equity holdings, closing out all four positions for a combined 15.9% profit, and on April 1st, Tom advised his clients to sell their longer term position in AIG warrants, locking in more than a 40% profit in just that one trade. If you'd like to see the kind of newsletter Tom O'Brien sends out to his subscribers each morning, then sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. 
No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. We got a call from uh, Mike in Lakewood. Hello, Mike. No, it's Lakewood, California. Oh, oh, okay. Cool enough. Uh, so what would you like to talk about today? Yeah, in Vincennes, I-N-V-N. I'd like to know what your opinion is. They had a really nice pop the other day on earnings. I was hoping they'd pull back a little bit more, but I'm not sure they're going to. Well, to get your risk-reward right, you would have to have it pull back. Uh, you know, this thing went back. Uh, to a long-term support, uh, and uh, you know the volume. I would like to have seen it shrink a little bit more, but not bad. You know, you had a previous low down here, uh, right on this gap at 1.3 million shares. So you know, you you had, I guess, your opportunity around that April 22nd low. Uh, if you were thinking about buying it uh, to get in there, let me uh, look at just a little longer time frame out here. On this yeah, thing. I'm doing it. I'm doing it because it looked like the earnings means that it's like the company's turning around. That's why I had didn't buy it sooner. But yeah, see, you had uh, if you go back here to uh, uh, let me see here. Let me yeah. Uh, because they got a pretty long term base. It looks like it, yeah, trading in the small range. Let's uh, look at here. You know this thing. Well, let me. There we go. 
Uh, you had a, a low out here. Is that right? Is that 0.36? Okay. Yeah, well, the low I show for 52 weeks is a little over nine. So. Yeah, I don't do so much on 52 weeks, but at that price point, all the way back until it uh, got tested with lighter volume. You know, you had a whole bunch of lows out here. June 4th low of 2012, uh, 1.1 million shares. Uh, July 24th low, 1.3 million shares. I was just seeing if there was anything out here that would really get me fired up. This thing gapped up. Uh, th what, three, almost a little over two years ago. Well, let me even go back farther here and see if I can find anything out here where this gap started. Three years. Now, we are talking about INV and it's trading out about 12. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, just just about I'm just wondering, did this thing IPO back here on this date? That's what I'm looking at out here because I just have data back to like uh, 2011. Uh, like a November 16th. Looks like maybe at IPO that day. I'll yeah, I'm not looking that far back. I've been looking back over the, li the, the reason, last year. The reason mainly. I am is there's a gap that is right here. This thing's been bouncing off of forever, and it's right here where it bounced off at the 909. Uh, do you watch uh, Tiger TV? I do sometimes, not usually, not usually active during the day. I'll normally watch the. I, I go back and look at this then on my channel, channel 14, and you'll see what I'm looking at. But there's a gap, and I mean, it's uh, this thing has been bouncing off this thing since I bet this thing went public. Uh, I'm familiar with the company. They make a lot of uh, uh, the devices that go in uh, games and also cell phones that tell you which direction. Uh, right. They're basically a, a miniature gyroscope for. Um, Portable devices to right. make it real simple. Yeah, now, uh, yeah, they came up, uh, it had some decent numbers, popped up, uh, nice volume. But, you know, to me, I'd want to get this thing to come back and probably uh, fill at least half this gap before I started buying uh, this thing. So I'm probably figuring uh, any kind of risk reward would have you come back to at least 10 bucks on this thing. Okay, so you want to see it down in the 10, 10 to 11 range someplace, in other I, words? I'd like to see it hold 10, and, and this is the reason why. There's a lot of funds out there that can't buy stocks that are below uh, 10 bucks, right? Uh, also, this thing has been above this for a while. Uh, if you start seeing funds start bailing out of this, that would be a good signal that this thing's probably going to go back down long-term to 5. If they start buying this thing and believe that long-term the thing can hold 10 bucks, then this one could be a huge winner. Yeah, that's uh, what I was looking at. And the, that's, the, that's the issue. I mean, it went right to 9 bucks. You know, I think they, if they spend more than, what is it, three months under 10 bucks, a lot of the funds will have to sell them some as low as 5 on older funds. But most of the new right. ones are on, at that 10 buck level. So you, is this these guys picking this thing up every time that it hits 10 bucks? Uh, and or or is this just a short squeeze uh, every time this thing comes down? Yeah. Here's here's what I dislike about the the chart, and that is that the energy from the February 12th high down to your uh, April 12th high did pick up a little, not horrifically, but it was probably 15 percent higher on the way down, 15 18 percent higher, which means that you might you're probably going to get a few more bounces out of this thing. Uh, but I'd certainly be watching this thing at 10 bucks if it gets back. Volume is nothing, and or you start seeing uh, any kind of signs of big, uh, major uh, accumulation. This could be a nice chart. You've got, uh, you know, if everybody gets back into this thing, you could get back up into these uh, previous highs. Probably the most likely ones up here around 1846 uh, on yeah, the May 3rd high of 2012 out here. Um, you know, you're going to have to get through this big gap at 16, but all these trades are great. I mean, if you could buy this thing at 10 bucks, hit 15, you got a 50% winner, uh, 18%, you got an 80% winner. So it's, uh, I think, uh, this is not a bad chart. It's just my guess is that you're going to have a little bit more consolidation before this thing comes down. And, uh, especially with the market, uh, as I keep looking at it, that looks like it wants to come back to about 1575. Uh, on the S&P cash, and then we're probably going to get a much better read on what's strong and what's not. Separate the wheat from the chaff. I'd look at it a lot stronger, uh, probably around that level. Not a bad chart uh, in the right sector. Uh, and uh, like you said, if they've turned this thing around, uh, it uh, could be kind of interesting. A lot of volume off the uh, energy off the bottom. 
but we just need it to get back in here somewhere, and I'm going to say probably at that $10 level, you're going to get a good read on it. Okay, well, thanks very much. You have a good day. You too. And, yeah, the thing is that uh, it can always take off and start running. Uh, what I dislike about this is all the little dojis here, four, five, six, seven, and that's normally either one of two things, accumulation or distribution. When you get five of those in a row, it uh, looks like we're going to get another one today uh, where by the end of the day, uh, the selling price and the uh, 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 or the opening and closing price are very narrow, uh, even though the, there's uh, bigger moves either day. That's a sign of accumulation or distribution. In this case, uh, probably a lot of people that uh, are uh, selling into the move up here. But uh, you know, you've got the uh, eh, probably ten bucks, maybe nine seventy-five. Uh, this thing could start making ABCs up. I think it's. Uh, I think it's uh, found low enough volume out here. I would have loved to see this uh, April 22nd come in with about 500,000 shares. That's a, you know that and the energy down on the last major leg, probably the two things that are the weakest on this. Uh, anyway, you can give me a call and be like Mike, 877-927-6648. Uh, uh, what else do we have out here? I wanted to get into some uh, Gartley patterns, so we're going to... Uh, set these up very quickly up here. Um, if you uh, have not been watching or uh, been in a cave for the last week or so, uh, we do have a new program out called Art of the Charts written by me. And uh, it is all about uh, uh, the uh, Tom O'Brien's book and how to implement it. Uh, and we're going to go through some of these Gartley patterns and we're going to talk about what makes good Gartley patterns and not. Uh, I was kind of joking with uh, Tom on Wednesday night when we did the webinar that uh, since I'm the first guy that I can find anywhere in the world that has done a mechanical test of Gartley's and actually described them mathematically, uh, I and, and we've been doing this for over a year, I may have looked at more Gartley patterns than anybody else ever. Uh, just because uh, uh, probably, you know, they're pretty tough to find a lot of times. Uh, but uh, basic energy services uh, is what I'm looking at today. It is a uh, symbol is a BAS. Uh, ideally, uh, you like to have a, uh, in this uh, bearish uh, Gartley pattern, which is what this thing is forming now, uh, you like to see a uh, not a high volume uh, high out here, which we actually had on March 15th. At the X point, energy down was a strong and down to the lows. Uh, you had a higher uh, volume low on April 4th than on the A point than you did on the C point. Uh, I dislike that this thing uh, came back 88%, uh, almost uh, tested the A low. Ideally, this would be somewhere around 60, 70%, uh, and then you'd have uh, moved back up to uh, basically 78% uh, retrace of the original X to A point. Uh, so whatever that was, if it's 10 bucks, then it's uh, $7.80. Uh, so when we're looking back up, though, uh, very, very light volume. And in fact, we're seeing it start to roll over here today. Not probably something you want to short, uh, but probably a good indication that at least this particular stock uh, may be weaker than the market. Uh, we'll go to another one out here. Uh, Benchmark Electronics. Um, this one is another one making a bearish uh, Gartley. Now, one of the things I dislike in this one uh, is the uh, B to C leg did not have a lot of days between it. I mean, it's there, but the question is, you know, is one or two days a really good uh, uh, pattern? You also like to see symmetry in it. Now, we've got uh, probably 20 trading days from the X point here to the A point. Uh, but we only have uh, maybe 50% or less of that from the C point to the D point. You, you kind of like these things to not be a mongoloid uh, butterfly, but uh, you know the wings should be, or to a great extent, uh, uh, it is nice when they are somewhat symmetrical. Uh, the other thing is you want to see uh, the ratio of the A to B uh, versus the C to D price move uh, close 
to one-to-one. -one. This one's a little lacking, and you can see that these things kind of get out of whack a little bit. This one's uh, basically 80%. Uh, the idea is that the A to B and C to D ratio would come in at a basically a one-to-one. -one. Uh, if this was a $10 move, then the, the C to D becomes comes into a C uh, comes into a ten dollar move. That symmetry certainly helps, uh, but the volume is light out here, um, and uh, eh, you can take a look at it. Uh, we're going to try to find better ones out here. Uh, Cent, I guess it's Century Corporation CNC, uh, and. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, kind of neat on several levels. One, uh, we are getting right to the uh, top of a gap that's existed in this stock for quite a while. Uh, we all know how uh, gaps affect it. But this thing came off with a huge volume. Uh, and uh, let's see, that was on March 22nd of 2012. Uh, came down on uh, uh, 2.3 million shares. Uh, this thing has worked since then to get back up into this level. Uh, the last time it was up here was on March 8th with 1 million shares, up to 48.55. Of course, it's gone and done this Gartley pattern now. And uh, not a bad looking Gartley pattern out here. It's done its bearish butterfly. It's gone just a little bit uh, above its uh, target, uh, D target, which would be $50.29. Uh, so what do we like about this one? Um, it's fairly symmetrical. You have uh, pretty much the same amount of trading days between the X and A and the C and D points. So it is uh, termed to be uh, somewhat symmetrical. Uh, it's not uncommon to see the ABCD ratio on butterflies stretched a little bit more. Uh, you'd still like to see a one-to-one. -one. So uh, what you dislike, uh, and probably why I wouldn't have taken this trade as a uh, as a uh, regular two-two-two, uh, was that the uh, B point came way up too close to the X point. Uh, so you're more than likely going to get a test of that X point when this thing was developing already. Uh, but what you don't have is, and what you're always looking for, uh, is at the B point and the X point that the volume increases over the previous highs uh, to give you a sign that this thing is strong and going to uh, be uh, pretty good up to its point, up to the D point, and or uh, is it weak and this thing really truly giving you a, a, a bearish signal out here. So we've got uh, basically 620,000 shares on April 12th, uh, which was the B point. We've got 1 million shares uh, on uh, March 8th. So if we go back and look, is it broke both those things, 471,000, 287,000, uh, 352,000, uh, 251,000, and now you're getting a little hammer candle up here at the top of a gap that had, what, 2 million shares, did we say? Uh, and if you just look down here, uh, the last uh, 10 trading days in the volume period, uh, let me zoom in just a little bit more on this. So just down, yeah. But I mean, you can almost like see a nice little ski slope down on the volume of the last, uh, what, eight trading days, nine trading days, uh, as it goes back in there and, and tests that gap. Uh, this one uh, is a nice setup. Again, you'd like to see a little bit more symmetry in it. And again, these are all, it's kind of like an art critic. Uh, you're looking at all these. Uh, it's rare to find one that's perfect. Uh, but you'll start seeing them. Now, one of the ones that I think is kind of interesting is a Copart, uh, and uh, it is a little bit better. Uh, this thing it does have another kind of uh, one to two ratio uh, in its uh, symmetry. Well, we'll have to finish this up in the uh, well, the last segment of the day, which we'll be looking at. Hopefully, everybody's having a great day. Haven't seen much movement in the market. We got past uh, two billion shares, but still. We're a rather weak out here. So we'll have to see how the end of the day wraps up. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get 
get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Let me tell you something, folks. I I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability. Because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today. Because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Anyway, we'll come back uh, to uh, Copart. Again, if you've got to, if you're quick, you can uh, still give me a call at 877-927-6648. I've uh, got a flat market out here with a very light volume, uh, just getting up to 2.1 billion shares. Uh, Copart, uh, CPRT is the symbol on that. Uh, if you're looking to f learn more about Gartley's, uh, not a bad uh, chart to look at here. Uh, this thing uh, didn't have much movement in its A to B leg. Uh, basically, if you look anywhere in the chart, uh, or on these charts, and if you uh, look at my mouse pointer, I don't know if you'll be able to see it as well, uh, but all the ratios between the moves are there. Uh, this basically retraced uh, 59%. Uh, so almost got a 618, which is pretty good. Uh, and uh, But it pulled back a little bit more 
uh, than you like to uh, get a nice little one-to-one. -one. Uh, but uh, does, you know, Tom kind of likes these because when they pull back, he thinks it's a bigger sign of weakness. Uh, volume uh, at the low did not really expand, which I would have loved to see the volume uh, at the C point more than the A point. Uh, what we did here have is a lot of the same thing, which is the market really kind of running out of gas, uh, very light volume. Uh, and, of course, uh, the C point uh, breaking the B point here uh, with a lighter volume. Basically, you had just under a million shares where the B point had a million shares. But uh, if you look in my power law vector indicator numbers, you'll see that the volume and energy was off in the C to D leg, about 25% in the original leg down. Um, so, eh, not bad out here. Uh, it has uh, gone above uh, its uh, D target, and uh, but uh, not a whole lot of action on that yet. Crocs is another one if you're uh, interested in these uh, garly, garly patterns. Oop, better go back to one year. There we go. Uh, a kind of a smaller Gartley pattern out here. Uh, this thing looks like it's uh, getting ready to change. Uh, I had a, a decent move, probably going to pull back to 16 bucks, I suspect. Uh, and uh, there's a few reasons why. I uh, would have liked to have seen the uh, volume expand. You had a nice a big candle out here on the 8th of May. Uh, volume came in at 1.5 billion shares. But if we go back and look at both the B point and the A point, uh, a lot more volume, 1.8 million shares at the X point. Uh, when this thing broke the B point, there was 2.1 million shares. And of course, what do we have? 1.5. So uh, light volume, couple of moves up here, maybe getting a, ready to pull back a little bit back here. Of course, uh, stock too cheap to, uh, to uh, short, but uh, probably uh, interesting nonetheless. Uh, Die Bold, uh, when we're looking at this one, this one's uh, uh, going up against its huge gap down uh, and uh, doesn't have the energy even to break uh, the B point right now. Uh, so not a Gartley in that at all. Uh, what else do we have? Dillard's. Uh, this one's kind of an interesting one. It uh, went just a little bit above its D target, which was $86.40. Got up to basically $87.60, uh, but kind of pulling back into that range. Uh, you kind of give these uh, patterns uh, up to about a 90% retracement. So this thing's still in the, the ball game, and you want to this thing probably at least to get up to about 70% before you're looking at this as a Gartley pattern. But this is just a standard Gartley uh, 222 pattern out here. But what I really love about Dillard's out here is this high volume low on February 25th that has not been retested. Um, you can almost make a claim that uh, it did get into the, that uh, candle on the April 19th low. But uh, I still think that uh, you're going to find that most of these eventually uh, do get uh, uh, retested on those high volume lows and it at least back down to that $75 level. So not a bad setup out here. Now again, uh, well, we're out of time. Yeah, the day a flu. Anyway, you all have a safe and happy day. Make sure uh, you check out why Orla well matters. I think uh, freedom is uh, not free. Good time to spend a little time looking just what the costs are in Orwell's book, 1984, and Animal Farm. Both good reads. We'll see you all tomorrow.